sun is shining, not a cloud in the sky. What a beautiful day. The birds are singing and so am I. What a beautiful day. I'd like to keep this moment for the rest of my life. But I know there'll always be a little toil and strife. What a beautiful day. Such a beautiful day. Hi knitters, welcome back to The Guilty Knitter. Um, this has been a month almost since I podcast last time and I really meant to do it more often. I keep saying that in every episode, I'm, so I should just stop and accept the fact that it's not gonna happen every two weeks. It's just not gonna happen. Um, but I am really happy to be back today because I have so many works in progress, whips um, to show you and uh, lots to tell you about because it's been so long. Uh, the, our knit along is going along. Um, there have been a few really beautiful um, finished objects posted and I hope there will be a couple more before the 15th of December, which is the deadline. Not too late to get in there, still two weeks. You could do, uh, definitely do a hat or some mitts in color work, not in color work, yeah. It's a color work and or sticking knit along so it could just be a hat or some mitts or whatever and I have some ideas in fact for those very things so um, anyway I am Vivian from the Guilty Knitter as I said and uh, I am a musician who lives in Montreal Canada and I play the trombone with the Orchestre Symphonique de Montréal that's my day job or night job or both lots of times so, um, and I've been super busy doing my day job, so that's, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <clears throat> it's been a really busy month at the orchestra, plus I had an extra thing that I had to do in Ottawa. Not that I had to do, I wanted to do. I played at their brass day um, at the University of Ottawa a week or two ago and saw an old friend of mine who used to be the first trombonist in the Montreal Symphony with me for 10 years and then he took off to Pittsburgh, drat him, <laughs> Pete Sullivan. He's a great player and a great colleague. So it was great to see him and to play a little um, trombone octet in the concert that he was giving. It was super fun. So yeah, so there was that and it just got to be so busy. Um, that I just couldn't even think about podcasting. In my spare time, I was knitting. I, I just can't seem to stop knitting. Um, I've, got, I've got like cast on as I as they call it. I don't usually get that bug. I usually have a couple things going, two, three things, and I just kind of go between them and everything's fine. But right now, I just there's so many things I want to cast on, it's just nuts. And I have a timeline, I have a time limit for a few things, like my daughter's uh, sweater for Christmas, and um, <clears throat> I also have two vests, so I'll tell you all about that in time. So I have a bunch of things uh, in my queue and on my needles, but we're just going to go one thing at a time, shall we? Um, anyway, welcome, welcome, I am... Uh, called Guilty Knitter. Guilty Knitter, yes. At Guilty Knitter on Instagram and The Guilty Knitter on Ravelry. And I also have a page over the on Ravelry for my podcast. And I have an introduce yourself thread there that's always at the top uh, from now on. And um, so you can, anytime you go over there for the first time, please, please um, introduce yourself. Tell me what you're doing and who are you from and all that. It's so fun to hear from people. And um, uh, at the same time, uh, if you look further down, there's a thread for the knit along. So <clears throat> you can check that out. Um, what else is new? Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been playing a lot of trombone. In fact, you know, I, I, on my blurb, if you go and look at my blurb, 
on the on my channel it says I'm a I'm a trombonist who finds herself knitting when she should be practicing and you know historically that's been the case but lately I've had to actually put in quite a few hours of knitting I have practicing trombone so so it's been severely cutting into my knitting time well you know I still manage to do lots but uh, um, it'd be nice to, I'm looking forward to retirement, to be honest. I've got a, a year or two and then I'm going to be retired. 2021, I think. So I guess that's two years, but who's counting? A year and a half. And then I'm going to do lots more knitting and lots more podcasting and lots of stuff. I don't know. I've got all kinds of plans. So, okay. So, um, welcome again, as I said. And mostly, I don't think I have a single finished object to show you, but I'm going to show you all my whips and what I'm making things out of. And I'm going to talk to you about this book, the Saltwater Mittens book, which I just recently received as a gift. And I'm going to start off with um, talking about my Opteca sweater. Where is that? This is a sweater I'm making for my daughter, and I have been uh, working on this for quite a while, but now I'm seriously having to get down to it because she's coming in two weeks, a little over two weeks. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna get finished by then, but um, she's, she's gonna be here for three weeks, so altogether I'll have some more time. And it's coming along. Does it look any different than last time? I don't know. But at least I've made it to the bottom six inches where I will be doing the um, the, uh, the edging, which is uh, a cable. Um, yeah, so I'm making this in Scout, Kilbourne, Kilbourne Fibers, Kilbourne, Kilbourne Woolens Scout in their navy, probably colorway, I can't remember what it's called, heathered, it's a heathered colorway, it's got some little bit of red and stuff in there. It's a gorgeous, lovely color. I love it. So, but um, now that I've gotten down to the um, down to the bottom here, where I've added, the, I'm starting this. Um, maybe I'll just show you a picture of it. Uh, do I have it in here? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'll show you a picture of it. I've shown it to you before, but what the heck? Here it is. Um, I hope it's not too glary. At the bottom, you can see there's like a, a tiny, like very thin cable pattern. These are all one by one cables. I really, I kind of like it. So what I decided to do in my modifications is to add, you know, one repeat of of the pattern here, all, all up and down the front, because I'm going to be sticking this sweater, right? So. <clears throat> Um, yeah, and that was actually such a genius idea. I keep on, I, I've been patting myself on the back ever since I started this sweater practically because I just realized, the more and more I realized I am not cut out for miles and miles of stockinette. I just, I just can't stand it. If that's all I'm doing, I get really demoralized. <laughs> I can't, I just don't want to do it. Plus, it's really hard on my arms. Like, I literally find is a huge difference. If I have to fuss around with some pearls and knits and uh, um, and anything like color work or whatever, it's it changes things up for my hands and my arms and it makes it easier. I don't know. I can just knit for longer if I'm doing different things. So and um, and also just the in keeps me interested. Like when I know that I have something coming up. At the end of this long row of stockinette, I'm going to be doing a little bit of fun stuff. That just keeps me going. So it doesn't take much. And um, anyway, so I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. I, I might show you a picture, insert a picture of me wearing it um, right here, maybe. Hi there. I'm inserting this little video to show you the progress on my Apteca properly. Uh, so I've put it over my my sanctuary tea, as you can see down here. And you can see the lovely panels here that I've put on either side of the steak panel. And I'm starting the the border of the bottom, which is a good, I think it's supposed to be about six inches altogether. So I've got another five inches to do. 
I hope that'll be, I hope that'll be enough for, you know, enough length. Oh, but there's also an inch of ribbing, so maybe it's six inches altogether. I don't know. Anyway, I'm looking forward to completion, but it's still going to be a while yet. Still have to do the sleeves. Um, yeah, definitely have some work to do. Anyway, carry on. But I have to put it on, um, put it on some waist yarn to show it to you. And I do want to try it on anyway, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll stick a picture in there and you can give me your opinion if you think it's going to, well, I'm hoping it's going to fit her. You won't, you don't know that, but, um, she is a little bit less heavy than me. She's at least 15 pounds lighter than I am. She's about my size, but she's slighter, you know, thinner. Um, so she, I think it'll fit her just fine. Plus, if there's any question about it, this is what I thought I would do is, there's this really good tutorial on how to make sort of a plaque with this right here where you stick it. And it's a very neat looking finish. And I thought, well, maybe, um, I could just leave it like that because she doesn't want any buttons so if it fits her well just like that then I won't do a button bend but if it if she wants a little more coverage at the front for whatever or she decides she does want buttons then I'm gonna I'll add a button bend but um, but I think I'm hoping that it'll just be not a nice edge on both sides without anything else so Pretty exciting. The only thing is that because of adding this plaque on both sides or this um, this edging on the both sides of the opening, I've had to had to figure do quite a bit of math to figure out how I was gonna making sure that I was fitting in all the other repeats perfectly well around uh, the thing because there's um, uh, at the sides at the very sides there she adds a few rows of. Um, twisted rib just right here and I wasn't quite sure why she did that like I don't know whether it's for shaping or so that it'll flow better into the ribbing because there's ribbing at the very bottom anyway I, I did a little bit of fudging with that and I think it's gonna work and if I have to do some more fudging when I get to the ribbing it's not the end of the world I'll just do it <laughs> I'll just do some some finagling and and it's super. I just find it really fun to to do some some of that finagling. You know, I like to do modifications to my sweaters. It's fun, or to anything really. Um, okay, so that's the Upteka sweater, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I just because I'm so distracted with all my other projects, that's the reason why I haven't. Oh, and I'll blame it. <laughs> quite a bit on my my niece who sent me a note one day after seeing something I I put up on Instagram she said oh would believe it or not Felix her son who's oh gosh I don't even know how old he is he's maybe nine eight or nine maybe I'm maybe that's too old maybe he's only seven or eight anyway I don't think she watches the podcast so hopefully she won't get upset that I don't know how old he is but so that's my great nephew Felix so he apparently wanted a knitted vest so I'm like okay I could do that for Christmas. <laughs> why, why did I open my mouth? Because of course, I ended up picking this pattern. I mean, I was looking at patterns. She didn't ask me to do anything specific, but, but when I showed them this one with the letters on them, uh, that's the one he wanted, of course. And um, uh, it's sort of, sort of a Hogwarts, you know, sort of Mrs. Weasley idea where Mrs. Weasley used to make sweaters every every year for the for the kids right um, with their names on it or their or letters or something <laughs> so this is kind of a Mrs. Weasley vest which I'm happy to do but it's really I mean it's not nothing right I've got to do first of all of course because it's all a seed stock in it I couldn't just do a duplicate stitch um, letter I had to do it in intarsia because otherwise it would just be too boring <laughs> so so I did the intarsia it turned out okay but it was a bit of a faff I had to um, I had to like look at a bunch of tutorials and then figure out how where it was going to go on the front and and um, yeah it, it was a little bit I mean of course it slowed me down 
in one sense it slowed me down, but the other sense, more importantly, it actually helped to keep me going on this project because as I said, stuck in it, stuck in it, stuck in it. I just, I, I would have just done two rows a day, you know, if it wasn't for this stupid letter in the middle. Anyway, he wanted, he wanted um, black and gold, but I had this beautiful blue in my stash, so I, um, I decided to use it. It's um, Debbie Bliss Falkland Iron Aaron Merino. Um, Falkland Aaron, Falkland? Yeah, Falkland Aaron, I guess it is. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's a lovely yarn, but the thing is, I thought I had three skeins, but actually I only had two, and I've run out of yarn. So I've asked my daughter, who bought it for me in London, if she could find me another skein of it. And she is coming on the 15th, 16th, so um, if she can find it, then I will finish it with that. If she can't find it, then I'm going to, I'm going to just make do. There's a yarn over at Espace Tricot that I think will do the trick. It's not, it wouldn't be a perfect match, but I think it'll be okay. And. And, and this is this so this is Falcon Aaron's as I said merino and navy or something and this is some hedgehog fibers sock yarn that I had in my stash and I just doubled it <clears throat> um, and I thought it made a really lovely gold letter so hopefully he's gonna like that um, then I so and of course not to be outdone his brother wanted a, wanted a vest as well so I've started a vest for him in the meantime since I can't finish this one until I figure out what I'm doing. Um, so, and his name is Edward. And it's a green, he wanted green and yellow. So this is what he got, green and yellow. Um, and that's the beginning of the E, as you can see. And again, I, I decided to stick with doing intarsia because it really is, um, it just is a lot more fun. I've made some sort of mistake here in my knitting. I mean, it's hardly noticeable on that side, but on the inside, it looks it looks like a really weirdly stretched out stitch or something. I don't know what I did there. Anyway, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, so there you go. I think it's gonna look super cute. You're in the middle of a row here, but um, yeah. And by the way, uh, if ever you need some some progress keepers and you have some odd earrings lying around, that's where that's how I that's what I did. I made some progress keepers with my odd earrings, and that's one that I I really like. Um, yeah, I just added a little. He just needs a couple of pairs of like a, some needle nose pliers and a little bunch of these little attaching things. I should know what they're called, but anyway, I don't. I guess they're clasps of some kind. Um, yeah, you can buy those online super cheap, or you can buy them probably at any store as well. Uh, you know, that kind of a store that deals with jewelry and whatnot. Um, so this is Barocco uh, Vintage, which is a, a really great stalwart kind of yarn, and even though it, it's got 52% acrylic and 8% nylon and only 40% wool. I mean, normally I like to use mostly wool, but for a kid's garment, I thought this would probably be, you know, the smartest thing to do. And it's just, they do come in lovely colors, I find. That's, that's called um, Envy, <laughs> Green with Envy. And this is Barocco, no, sorry, uh, Cascade 220 in their sunshine colorway. It's not a pretty color, it's got lots of little flecks in there. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of this. I have this enormous ball of yarn um, that I won't need, but I'll figure something out. It's kind of a nice color for like baby clothes or something, right? So, and there's always babies coming along, right? That's what I figure. Might as well knit a few stitches while I'm here. Um, okay, so what's next? Oh, I forgot to tell you the name of that pattern. That's called the Christmas Vest, Christmas Morning Vest. And it is by, what the heck is her name? Um, hold 
them hold the phone um, it's called hold on a minute Christmas morning vest by Jenny Santo Pietro and that's available on Ravelry I did not find a free one that I liked as much as this one um, it, it comes in a bunch of of sizes you could do it for an adult, you can do it for a small child, a baby. Um, they're very cute. And um, <clears throat> the thing is, um, I really could have designed this myself, but I didn't have time. I, I, I mean, I have, you know, I did a vest last year for myself and I could have totally done this, but I just needed some something. I just didn't have time to do all the math as well as all the other figuring out I did because of the intarsia, for God's sakes. But that was my fault. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit so I'm not cutting off the top of my head. And um, if you're looking at this beautiful beautiful um, shawl behind me, it is my, um, my girl's best friend shawl by Isabel Kramer. Isn't it gorgeous? I really love it. I don't use it a heck of a lot, but it, as a decoration, it's... Oh, I love it. I put it on the back of my couch as a decoration. The reason why I don't use it that much is because it's quite heavy. I did it in a DK <clears throat> versus a single or fingering weight. It, it that what it calls for. Uh, but I really, really love it anyway. I mean, I throw it over my shoulders sometimes when it's chilly, but it's not something I'm going to wear like a scarf because it's just too too much, too bulky. I I mean, I do occasionally. But anyway I just it is a gorgeous pattern and it was one of the most fun things I ever knit so I recommend it highly I mostly use Lizu DK by Julie Aslan that's the pink and this sort of sky or icy blue here and the two different yeah the two different colors of pink those are all Lizu DK definitely highly recommend that yarn and the brown is um, something else which I don't remember but it's on a, I've talked about it in a previous episode, so you can scroll back and see if you can find it. If you'd like to hear about that. And so, um, okay, so I got the Christmas morning vests. Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so I'm doing these fun socks, which, I mean, I finished my other my uh, last pair of socks and I, I didn't really think I was going to head right into another pair but when I was on tour I had brought some sock yarn in case I ran out of things to do and I did start some socks and look how fun they are look at that these this is uh, this great yarn that I bought uh, at Twist a, couple, a few years ago at the festival in Quebec um, near Hawkesbury um, and it's called it's by a company called Studio Lou, which I don't I don't think I've ever seen any of their stuff anywhere else. But um, isn't that a wonderful colorway? I just love it. Um, and then I I did a little uh, a little bit of color work here to make that um, kind of whatever you call it checkerboard slate checkerboard thing, um, and, and into the Hedgehog Fibers pink, which is the jelly colorway. Hedgehog Fibers uh, sock yarn. And then um, I decided to try another one of Laura Lee Beltman's um, little, kind of like intarsia, but not as annoying because you don't have to do work back and forth. You work in the round continuously. And there are just like this, these little, and in the back it looks very neat. If you can see that. Um, and it's just a little, a couple little techniques you need to know to to do it, and it's I find it's uh, like kind of fun. I mean, at first I thought, nah, I don't know, like I I don't know if I'm gonna love it, but it's just a fun thing to do, and I'm just gonna carry on. Um, yeah, I can't just I haven't decided what kind of heel I'm gonna do. It's either gonna be an afterthought heel or or a um, <coughs> or what. Or, I was thinking of the German short row heel. A friend of mine at the knitting group, Doreen, was saying that's one she likes. And it is a really neat looking 
heel. It looks a lot like an afterthought heel, I find. Um, but yeah, I might try that. And uh, there, that's it. That's it for that for that little project. So that's not any particular pattern. I'm just I just you know start with Julie's Judy's magic cast on left. So I have to have to redo that. Um, I was just saying that with um, when it comes to stranded intarsia color work, you are actually knitting back and forth and not not in the round, even though it may look like you're knitting in the round. You actually have to purl um, and and you know purl on the alternate rolls because you're going back and forth. And the reason being that you otherwise you're going to have your your yarn will be that you need is going to be on the wrong side of your knitting. So that's the way to do it. But there is another way, apparently, uh, which I just discovered on YouTube when I was looking around for help and ideas, and it is to kind of employ the stranded technique a little bit. It's kind of a neat method. I couldn't explain it to you now because um, it's a little too complicated to just talk about over the without showing you. And I'm not doing it, so, but I will try it sometime. It looked kind of interesting so that you wouldn't have to, um, you wouldn't have to purl every other row, which I'm pretty sure I've already established is not my favorite thing. But I must say, just because I'm doing this little letter, it just helps me so much. Um, I don't even mind the purling so much. It's only for 20 rows, right? So, no biggie, no biggie. Uh, Actually, you know, I don't know. I'm sure there's a way of doing this without having to purl all of these rows, but I didn't figure it out. So I'm just doing it by the by the book, as it were. And I think it's looking quite nice. So okay, so oh, I was gonna. I was mentioning about my socks. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around here a little bit, but I'm using up this this stuff that was in my stash. I guess I'm, I can't remember what I bought it for originally. It must have been for a, a little bit of a splash of color in something or other. I can't remember why I bought it, but um, it's a lot of yarn left, so I'm going to have plenty for this pair of socks. But the thing is, it's hedgehog fibers, and they only put 10% nylon in their sock yarn, which I think is kind of crazy. Um, it's not really enough for it to be really strong, and I would recommend... I mean, I'm only using it because it's in my stash and I want to use it up, but and it's going to make pretty cute socks. And I'm hoping also that because I'm knitting at a much tighter gauge than I used to, that that will help with the hardiness of the socks. But um, <clears throat> I would recommend a hardier 25% nylon and or you know and or a more rustic yarn that's got a bit more um, durability to it. This is not, I don't think, the, the hardiest sock yarn. They do make gorgeous colors and they're very popular, but um, I'm not as excited about the way it, um, okay, I know I've, I've, had, I've had socks, spring holes in them with that yarn, so, or with yarn that's only got 10% nylon in it at least. Anyway, so, um, the next thing I'm just going to show you is this little guy, which is the beginning of a pair of mittens. And it's a, it's a pattern that I just downloaded from Stephanie Earp, who also did this gorgeous tea shirt that I made. It's called the Sanctuary Tea. And um, she's one of my favorite, especially local designers, but designers in general. She's very, very good, and I hope she... Hope she really. Hope a lot of people get to know her as they are. I think by now. But anyway, she's got tons of neat designs, like very, very interesting ideas. That's what I like about her. I mean, I've, this is the only thing I knitted of hers because I wasn't sure. Like some of her patterns, I think, are just wouldn't suit my body type. But you know, that's okay. I know she she's coming up coming out with things all the time, like all kinds of different things. So. And this one is a pair of mittens, so of course that's not an issue. And I will show you what, it's look, what it looks like. It is so cute that I couldn't help just quickly casting on. 
I'm going to show you what they are like. Of course, they're very Christmassy, so maybe it'll be like I won't want to wear them um, all the time. But look how gorgeous they are. They're called Spruce and Sparkle, I think. Spruce and Sparkle. Yeah, Spruce and Spark. Isn't that cute? So, since I had this um, this uh, yarn in my stash, which is an alpaca, baby alpaca, I think it's kind of out of, I don't think they actually even make it anymore. I'm not quite sure about that. I think it's Barocco baby alpaca. And I had it in two different colorways, this brown and this green. I think I bought them on, online, uh, on sale at Despas Tricot one time. And I've been kind of nervous about using it because I know that a pile pack tends to stretch. So, uh, but I thought this would be a pretty good use for it, being as it's green and black and well, green and brown, and that's those are that's a mitten pattern that has a tree on it. Um, I thought I would try it out with this, but I, if it turns out well, if they turn out well, I might make another pair some other time. But um, I thought it'd be nice to use up some stash. And that's my goal, always my goal. Um, so yeah, it starts off with this corrugated rib, as you can see. Um, I'm not, I actually haven't decided whether I'm gonna make the green my background, background color or the brown. It makes more sense for the green to be the tree, obviously. But um, on the other hand, um, I wondered if the brown would, pop out more. I mean, it might be nice to have a lighter background color. I don't know. I'm going to see. I'll make a decision later. Okay, so I'm really running through this fairly quickly now. I'm almost done with my whips and my, well, I'm done with my whips, I think. Well, I have another thing that's hibernating, but I'm not going to bring that out. Um, this now this is um, a little swatch I'm doing for the Garden Gate sweater by Jennifer Steingas. Yeah, Jen, Jen Steingas. And I just thought I would, you know, I just was curious about how these colors were going to work out together. These two fibers, because but and I think they're going to be just great. Aren't they pretty? I'm loving it. Um, I, I really detest making um, sort of the faux uh, knitting in the round kind of swatch, but they do say that it's a better idea to um, to do a swatch when you're knitting in the round, um, to do it this way, which is kind of like, you know, you you just go back to the beginning of your round all the time and have these these extra, anyway, you can look it up. It's not a very um, fun way to do it, but apparently it's better. Anyway, I'm getting engaged with this, so I'm figuring that it'll be just fine. I'm not gonna do any more on that swatch, I don't think. And anyway, I'm not even thinking about starting that sweater till after Christmas, because I am totally swamped with <clears throat> things at the moment. So have I finished everything I want to say? Oh, no, another thing I'm gonna make of Stephanie's is this gorgeous thing, which is newly out, fairly newly out, yoke a clock. Isn't that beautiful? You knit yourself a clock. I think it's such a genius idea. And this, she has like three color work patterns in there. And um, <clears throat> so you can choose which one you like the best. Or <clears throat> she has a blank one, so you can do it yourself. So here are a couple more. And so you you can order the the kit on on her website, and she just sends you the 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 pattern, and the clock fixings, and the hands, and everything, and the battery or not the battery maybe, but all their other stuff. And um, yeah, and so you can you can even design one yourself. So there's like a blank, a blank. Um, um, what do you call it? Blank. You know what I'm talking about. What the hell am I talking about? I'm talking about charts, the chart, yeah. So she sends you a, a blank chart as well. That, I mean, it's all electronic, but you could definitely um, print it out. 
and um, yeah, it's kind of fun. So I'm dying to start that project because I want to at least make one of them as a gift for Christmas. Apparently it only takes, you know, five or six hours of knitting, which is not bad. And it, can you imagine how much fun that would be? Oh my God, I can't wait. So, uh, but I, I, I just have to be disciplined because I've got these little vests that have to go off to Toronto before Christmas. Um, and I've got Erica's sweater, which definitely has to be finished before Christmas. So, or at least by Christmas. So I've got too many things on my needles to be distracted by anything else. I mean, it's bad enough I started those mittens, which I don't have to finish. I can just leave them on my needles, right? I can be strong. Mm. I don't know about that. Um, so last time, um, last podcast, I mentioned, or I put at the end, some um, pictures from my, my recent tour to South America and Mexico. And I'm going to add some more footage at the end of this one. So and don't forget to go to the end and check that out. Um, and what else? Oh, yeah, I wanted to tell you about this book from the island of Newfoundland, Saltwater Mittens. This was a gift from my good friend Linda, who went there on a vacation, went to Newfoundland on a vacation recently and bought me this gorgeous book by Christine Legro and Shirley A. Scott. And there are 20 heritage designs. Um, and it's just a stunning book with that. A lot of interesting things in here. And I started reading the, the, the story, the sort of, um, yeah, the story throughout the book um, where they talk about, I don't know, they talk about the different, where they came from and stuff. Anyway, it's super cute. And they have this, this is an interesting thing. Apparently this is quite, um, God, I'm losing my words here. This is a Newfoundland kind of a thing, which is the, what they call the trigger, the, the trigger finger. Um, I don't know if it's really for pulling a trigger, but anyway, it's, um, I hope not. But no, it, it's a very handy thing, like if you, so that you can use your finger and thumb separately and not have to take off your mitten. So I thought I might just try that, you know, why not? Maybe I'll try one of those. It's better than, um, it's, it's better than doing a whole pair of gloves. I, I couldn't imagine knitting a pair of gloves. That sounds like way too much work. Like, you know, there's a, quite a few glove patterns in here, but um, I don't know. I just, they're not very warm for one thing, as from what I can, uh, with my experience with gloves is they're not as warm. And so I don't see the point in going through all the trouble of knitting those, all those fingers. But there are some gorgeous patterns in here and I would recommend giving this book a try. It's very interesting. And apparently there are two, uh, two of them. There's um, another version of it. Oh, and there's little baby gloves that you don't even have mints, so you don't even have to do a thumb. They're just for, for I think those are for babies. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Yeah, that's what these are. Super cute. Wee ones, they're called. Thumbless mitts for babies. Yeah, super, super cute. So, definitely recommend. So, get that one. I'm sure it's online somewhere. Um, but uh, if you get to go to Newfoundland, even better, pick up your own copy when, on your trip. Um, I've never been, I've been, I've been to St. John's, but I've never been to any other place in um, Newfoundland, which I would love to do because it's supposed to be just gorgeous there. Um, what else can I tell you about? Oh yeah, I've been um, knitting, or knitting, knitting and Listening to books has my, been my thing lately. <clears throat> I've not been listening to very many podcasts as I used to. I kind of vary between knitting, you know, listening to podcasts and listening to books. So I, I recently read The Book of Dust by Philip Pullman, which is um, a prequel to his, um, his Dark Materials trilogy. And it's a fantasy book. Um, geared towards younger audiences but I just I find them really really well written and fun to read so that one was particularly good I thought the book of dust and um, 
I'm also right now currently reading A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. She wrote um, A Girl with the Pearl Earring, so that was quite popular a few years ago. I read that one as well and it was good. And this one's, I'm enjoying it. Um, it's, it's light reading really, but um, that's kind of what I want right now. Um, especially when I'm trying to knit at the same time, I can't have anything too, too demanding to listen to because I got to concentrate a little bit on my knitting. Um, <clears throat> all right, well, I guess that's about it for me. Um, I don't really have much else to tell you, I guess. Uh, please come back and check out the winner of the, of the knit along, which I will announce after the 15th. I will definitely put it up on my Ravelry um, podcast page. So uh, the winner should check uh, if you put in, um, if you've put in a, um, a project then a, a finished object picture and and stuff then you should go there and make sure you know because the thing is if my, my daughter's arriving on the 16th so I'm not sure how easy it'll be for me to fit in a podcast but you know at that point so if I can't get it out right away then um, just check on my on that uh, podcast page and you can find out whether you won a prize Okay, and um, yeah, and I'll, I'll announce it on Instagram as well, because why not? So do, if you want to find me on Instagram, I am at Guilty Knitter, as I said, and I'm quite active over there. That's really the only place I'm pretty active. I don't go on Twitter very much, and Facebook, I don't really have a Facebook um, page for knitting. So there you go, that's it. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please press like if you did and subscribe if you want, don't want to miss any new podcasts that come out. And I will see you next time. Okay? Happy knitting. And happy Christmas and all the other holiday season <laughs> around this time. Happy Hanukkah and, and all the good stuff. All right, bye. Bye.